Welcome to the Shoe Reload Repeat Podcast. I am your host, Practical as Buck, and today we have a very special guest, um, the owner and proprietor and competitive shooter, Sean Hines. Hines, Hines, did I say last name? Hines, Hines, Hines. Yes, sir. That Hines. is correct, Sean and Hines. Of course, my wonderful uh, co-host, Charles, a.k.a. Dad. Howdy. So uh, we all were recently in the same geographic region or area this weekend. We shot the River City Hose Fest put on by Red Dirt Shooting Sports, which Sean owns. Um, and I know me and Dad have been talking about it. Had a pretty good match. Had a good time. Um, well, I guess we can kind of talk, talk about that. So how did everybody <laughs> do in the River City Hose Fest? <laughs> how did well, you do, Dad? Go first. <laughs> I did. I did all right. Uh, you know, I, the competition was just too much. I had to put my gun up, and I went ahead and taped targets and stood up steel for the rest of the match. And, and your first stage was fast. I wouldn't call it a host fest. I would call it more of a trickle. <laughs> it was more of a <laughs> <laughs> the red dirt shooting's worst trickle fest for you. <laughs> yeah, you shot. Yeah, you had some gun problems, and you got DQ'd on a questionable call. So. It's yeah. all right. Hey, Sean, maybe if you do it next year, can we get a challenge flag? Yeah, can I get off <laughs> the station, please? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm sold. Done. <laughs> Our committee. <laughs> We're the range marshal. I got a challenge. There it goes. Uh, I shot okay. Um, shot in the open division with my carry optics clock. Um, I shot out of my comfort zone. I tried to shoot as fast as I could or faster than normal, and I only had like seven mics which is not terrible. Um, I did enjoy shooting those 27-round magazines, those 170 millimeter mags, so it kind of makes me want to shoot open because uh, that was a lot of fun. So, But it was fun. It was the first time I ever shot that match. Um, shooting more than 30 rounds in a stage is a lot. Like You, yes, don't, you don't realize they're shooting three rounds per target. It's, like, it's a lot. Um, and I picked up a lot of brass. I don't even know how much brass I picked up, but... Well, that three rounds in every target gets in your head, too, because we're used to shooting two, you know? Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, it throws your rhythm off. It throws your cadence off. You you're, you almost consciously have to take that third shot as opposed to just, just letting your subconscious take over and fire two and move on. Right. How did you do in the match there, Sean? I, I did okay. This was actually the first uh, hose fest or, you know, one of these high-capacity uh matches that i've actually ever shot because i should, for the last three years i've been shooting single stack so not very competitive in one of those type of matches oh man so uh it, it went pretty well i was i was pretty happy I, I really just tried to keep the gun running as fast as i could on target as fast as i could i really didn't care that much if i got charlie's i just really looked for time um tried to keep the feet moving the whole time and, and tried to blend positions as much as i could um, made a couple bonehead moves. You know, it seems like every match, uh, we always walk away and we always have those one or two stages we wish we could take back. Um, but overall, I was, I was, I was lucky enough to uh, pull away with the limited division win. So I was, I was pretty happy awesome. in the end. Yeah, we, we, we were joking. We were going to go eat dinner with my in-laws and we said, saw that you had won. And we're like, oh, look at that. He took the $100 out of his pocket and put it right back in the other pocket. Uh, that's cool, yeah. though. Yeah, we're, I, got, I got my own gas money for the week. <laughs> yeah, we were we were we were joking. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it was a good match, man. It's a lot of fun. It was. It was really good. River City puts on good matches anyway out there. I love going to those matches. They're always real competitive and. Hundred percent agree. A lot of good dudes come out and shoot. A lot of good, you know, a lot of I think better competition. Have Have you ever been? I know it's probably a long drive for you from Uvalde to the Austin match. That Austin. It was uh, Oh man, those matches are just as good. It's a long drive. It'd be a long drive for you. So it's a long drive for me. It's like two hours, but man, they put on good matches. Okay, good deal. I'm about two hours from uh, Alpha Mike, so I'm sure it's probably about another hour or so from there. So that's that's a long that's a long trip for a local match for me. Yeah, but it's a it's a good match. Um, I enjoy I enjoy it. I've I've gone there a couple times. They do them on the first and third Saturdays. They went to second sat. They went to third Saturdays now. So. It's a good, it's a good place to shoot. So, I, I heard that match sells out in about fifteen minutes, or fills up in about fifteen yeah, minutes. Yeah, you have to, you have to catch it. Like I shot, I shot it um, in 
June and I had to, I barely made it on a squad. So. Wow. That's a sign of a good match right there. Yeah. When, when you're filling up that quick, that means good stages, good shooters, um, you know, good competition and it's run well. That, then, that's the ultimate sign right there. The bays are nice too. Cause they have like awnings at every single bay, like actual like awnings. Um, yeah, we shot, we shot that IDPA match that one, uh, that our very first IDPA oh, okay. match. Yeah, that's a nice, right? And so like in the summertime, man, it's great. Cause everybody has shade. Um, it's nice. Can't beat that. Oh, that's good. Can't beat that. If I'm ever up there, I'll definitely check it out. So I guess we can start. So Sean, why don't you kind of uh, just introduce yourself and kind of tell the people who you are and what you do. All righty, perfect. Well, uh, as y'all said, I'm, I'm, I'm living in Uvalde, Texas, but I haven't always lived in Texas. I'm actually uh, originally from Ohio, a little small town uh, kind of east of Cleveland up there by Lake Erie. Uh, grew up there, went to school there, and then uh, was living there till about 2007 when uh, I actually joined the Border Patrol and moved down to good old Laredo, Texas. Uh, that's where I'm, I'm employed now with the U.S. Border Patrol. I'm a firearms instructor with the Border Patrol now. Been doing that on and off for the last, oh, almost four years now. Um, met a local girl, married a local girl, so that's it. I'm never leaving South Texas again. I'm, I'm here for, for life now. And uh, to be honest, growing up, I really never had any experience or exposure to rifles or pistols or anything. I kind of joke about it, but actually the first time I ever picked up a pistol was at the U.S. Border Patrol Academy. Um, really? And that, that was that was that was something else. Yeah, I actually <laughs> little uh, little embarrassing story here. I actually loaded my bullets in the magazine incorrectly the very first time I ever put bullets in a in a mag. <laughs> I put them oh. in backwards. <laughs> oh, oh, that's crazy. Yeah, that's, I mean, other than just shooting little 22 rifles at, at camp and stuff like that, summer camp and everything, I really didn't have much exposure to firearms. Um, so I kind you're of a firearm instructor. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. That's awesome. <laughs> um, so that was kind of, yeah, the Border Patrol was kind of my exposure to firearms. Um, I, I finally tell you, know, I tell these guys now when I was trying, just trying to graduate the Border Patrol Academy. I had such an anticipation issue that I would put my front sight on the target's right shoulder and <laughs> slam that trigger down into the five ring. And that's how I passed the firearms qualification pistol course <laughs> oh, <laughs> to graduate wow. the Border Patrol. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Border Patrol, they squared me away, though. They, they, they squared me away and, and, and got me some pretty good training. And uh, I started off down in Laredo, Texas. and. And got some really good training with pistol and rifle and shotgun down there. And then I uh, took off to Arizona. I was out in Nogales, Arizona for a little over five years. And, and that's actually where I first shot my my first uh, USPSA match. Um, some of the guys, I was I had got certified as a firearms instructor. So I'm walking around there thinking, you know, I'm, I'm the big dog on campus. And the guys are saying, hey, why don't you come out and shoot this match? Okay. All right. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm an instructor. I got this, you know, I'm an expert border patrol shooter and boy, I, I think I finished like 21st out of 22 guys. <laughs> I just got rocked. My, I, my world was rocked and, uh, I could not believe how fast and how accurate these guys were shooting these targets. And I was hooked. I, I was absolutely hooked at that. Um, I mean, it didn't, didn't kind of, you know, I guess I was spoiled because at my local matches, we were, you know, shooting with, uh, Elias, uh, I'm going to murder his last name, frankly, Olis, you know, world champion now, you know, in single stack and everything. So I was kind of this little spoiled kind of got to shoot with him and he kind of brought us up in the sport and kind of showed us how to do some stuff out there in Tucson. And, uh. Yeah, that was my first exposure to USPSA or competitive shooting back in, I would say it was about May or so of 2015. Okay. So we, we kind of started at the same time then, competitive shooting-wise. Oh, yeah. Could we shot our first IDPA match, what, it would be, no, I guess it would be two years later. It was, a, it was a spring before you got married. Yeah, so a couple of years later. That's cool. Yeah, you're lucky you've never shot IDPA. 
and so I know I there's a lot of dudes that you know I've had some dudes on the podcast I had like Devin and some other guys that shoot it at a high level I just I mean I know we rip on it a lot but it's just kind of it's all over the place man it's 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 a interesting sport for sure it's nothing like USBSA yeah so. and there's a lot of uh ball and strike calls by the RO if you're not doing stuff properly I mean, you don't get DQ'd, but you get knocked down on points. Yeah, like you can't drop a full magazine on the ground. You get to retain it and all kinds of crazy stuff like that. So Sounds like a blast. Yeah, it's a, it's a whole blast. <laughs> yeah. um, so you said you started out in single stacks, and now what do you shoot? What what division are you shooting? Yes, yeah, sir. Started off in single stack. It was, it was fun. I mean, out west, I don't know if you ever shot any matches out west, but single stack is huge. Right. It is. You might, at a local match of 50 guys, there might be 15 guys shooting single stack. Oh, wow. Uh, you go to a match in Texas, a state championship or an area four or something like that, and there might be 15 guys in total, you know, shooting right. single stack. And this is just a local match. Uh, it was fun. I, I enjoyed it. It really uh, kind of made me hammer on the fundamentals and all that good stuff. Um, and I shot that for about three years or so, made master class. And uh, about a year ago, uh, about, I don't know, December of 18, I decided to make the jump to limited. And, uh, man, it's been fun. It's been, it's been awesome. What did you um, shoot in a single stack? It was the uh, STI DVC Classic in 45. Okay. Oh, man. Well, at least you're shooting 45. That's respectable. Yeah. You know, like, come on. Yeah. You better believe it. That's funny. Yeah. Like but some dudes shoot. Fat and slow yeah. gets the job done, man. Yes, sir. <laughs> I was, uh, surprisingly, it was a pretty hard transition for me for about six months to go from single stack to limited. And I was very, very surprised at that. It's a mindset change. Oh, 100%. I, I got that first 20-round mag, and I said, ooh, I can shoot as fast as I can possibly pull this trigger, and if I miss, I got lots more rounds to make them up. And uh, I, I, I found myself shooting a lot looser, uh, a lot you know, more out of control, as opposed to single stack. You might have you know, eight shots in a – you know, an eight target array or, or an eight shot array, and you only got nine rounds shooting single stack majors, you better hit every single round, every single target. And that, that took me a minute to, to really get uh, dialed into the limited, the limited uh, mindset. But I think I got, I'm starting to figure it out slowly. Yeah, Mike Stoker, who I had on him on the podcast, he's a big single stack shooter out there in uh, in Arizona and like Nevada, like the Las Vegas area. And um, it was that stage at Host Fest where they had the like the four and four targets, and you had to shoot them with the steel. He was he he was telling me like every single eight rounds, he was like thinking reload, 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 <laughs> reload. Um, yeah, I, I think I, I would like to make the switch like in the off season, like in the winter time, to like a a low capacity division. Like I thought about maybe production would be cool or even like a single stack. I think would be fun just to, to dink around in a little bit and you know, play with. Absolutely. You got to get creative with your stage plans because especially local matches, they aren't very single stack friendly. Um, even your area matches are more kind of geared towards production. Um, so you really got to get creative with your stage plans and uh, man, you get good at reloading real quick. Yeah, you learn how to you know, do those fast. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So uh, why don't you talk about? So you shoot limited. So what gun are you shooting? What what brand? Uh, I picked up um, the STI DBC uh, limited gun with the island barrel. But they don't make and, those, anymore, right? Those is that no. right? It was uh, just last year. They only made them in 2018, and I was able to pick up uh, uh, two of the identical ones, and and man, they they ran pretty well. They, they run pretty well. I really don't have any issues other than, you know, your typical gun issues that you're going to have come up from shooting a whole bunch like we do. That's cool. Yeah, the island barrel to me, that's a cool idea. But if you don't know what island barrel is, basically, or island sight, that basically like the front sight is stationary, like around the crown of the muzzle, and it doesn't move. So like your front sight essentially doesn't move. So it's almost, I don't know. I've never shot one before, but I think it'd be it's kind of a cool concept. It's like it's on an island. Yes, like on, a, yeah. like on an island. Yeah. Where to put it? <laughs> That's awesome. Um, 
the switching back and forth from my work pistol to that one, I, I mean, if I really, really concentrate on that front sight, you can kind of see uh, it settles a little bit quicker, but I, I don't think it's really that much of a huge advantage. It, it's just like it lightens the slide quite a bit. I'd say that'd be the biggest advantage. Yeah. What do you what do you have to carry for work? Uh, we carry the uh, H&K P2000 in 40. So wow. plastic fantastic. That's cool. So that's a switch. It's, it's, they're good little guns. They run. They're reliable. And that's what you need for law enforcement, you know, something reliable. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to brush your mags or anything. <laughs> you won't be out there brush. Hey, hold on, man. Stop. Yeah. Doing that, man. I need to brush my mags, dude. <laughs> yeah. Hey, how to roll, how to roll. Yeah. Hey. Uh, no, we, uh, they're they're very very actually very reliable and uh, surprisingly they uh, they just or they just uh, authorize a new contract. We're going to Glock's here in sometime 2020. All right. And uh, Glock, this is this is all public knowledge. Don't worry. Uh, Glock has developed the new. It's called the Glock 47, and that's what we're going to be going to. It's strictly going to be for LEOs, law enforcement officers, and uh, basically the big thing about that is it's kind of competing with SIG's uh, 320, where it has it's a module modular system where you can take the slide off the 47 and the slide off the 47 is completely compatible with the slide and the frame off the 19. That's cool. Yeah. So it's something a little different depending on your grit hand size and all that. You can get the full size grip with a 19 slide. That's awesome. Kind of like the Glock 19 X or whatever the hell that monstrosity is called. (laughs) Yeah. They just, they add finger grooves, take them off, add this, add that, call it something new. And that's a, that's a day. We're Glock, we're Glock guys. That's what we use because it's they're cheap. They run well sometimes, and um, <sighs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. hey, that Glock forty seven is it nine or is it forty? It's going to be nine mil. Okay, there we go. Yep. So it's 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 we're, we're we're excited to see what it can do. It's going to come with the RMR cut and everything. So that's kind of interesting. I've never shot carry optics or red dot, but there you go. it'll. Yeah. It'll come ready for carry optics, so oh, shoot. we'll see. I might, have yeah. to, might have to buy a new gun. Yeah, you might have to, yeah. I have to buy a new gun. Awesome. Why don't you kind of talk about your shooting store, your the Red Dirt Shooting Sports, and kind of how you started that and why you started it and how you run that. Since, you know, you have a full-time job, you have a, a real job. It's not your entire thing that you rely on for income. Right. Uh, started it about, we went live in January of 18 and, uh, it came about because I wanted to buy new pistols and I wanted to travel more and I wanted to dump more money into USPSA. So I better have found a way to figure out how to pay for all that. And, uh, I came up with it and, 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 uh, started it. I just, you know, run it out of my house. I run it. I got a warehouse, kind of a big barn in the back and, where I got all my inventory. I sell actually uh, through my website, uh, reddirtshootingsports.com. I also have uh, some of the stuff on there on Amazon as well. You can look me up, uh, Red Dirt Shooting Sports, through my marketplace. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's like, a, like you said, it's a part-time job. It, it basically pays for my plane tickets and my hotel and, and my entry fees. So, you know, it's, it's a good way to, to fund this uh this this addiction i mean i mean have it <laughs> or how right. you know <laughs> right yeah that's cool like that's that's a good way to look at it is a, it's a way to to help you enjoy you know because you know uspsa man it's not cheap yes sir it's, it's, and if you want to shoot it you know at a high level you really gotta you really gotta put in the money so, yeah that's cool um i ordered a belt from you i'm probably gonna be ordering more stuff from you later on and you do a you do a great job of supporting the the local clubs around here um especially you know san antonio or river city shooters so that's good man it's good to see a a company a a local company like that you know supporting the local the local clubs and hopefully Go ahead, there, there, there's so much junk going on out there in the world right now about you know anti-gun anti-gun that um I feel as a business owner, you know, these, these guys are buying from me. I'm, I'm going to do everything I can to support the shooters and, and, you know, promote, 
you know, first of all, gun safety, because USPSA is extremely safe. You know, we're all about gun safety and, and you know, enjoying the, the sport of shooting. So uh, for me to be able to support the River City Shooters Club, which is a top notch organization, I'm more than happy to do that. Yeah, it's awesome. And you know, hopefully your brand will grow, you know, like um, I think it's kind of crazy. You know, Red Hill Tactical was this small holster company. You know, a few years ago, and now they're you know sponsoring low cap nationals in a couple of weeks. So, you know, that's more power to you. But we appreciate it. And you're right, USPSA is very safe. People get DQ'd even when they don't do anything wrong. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny, man. That's pretty funny. Oh yeah, I need another Stuff. match, boys. There you go. Stuff that you see going on at a public range would, you know, not even be tolerated in USPSA. You know, we, we realize we're, we're right on the edge of almost out of control, but it's a very controlled atmosphere. So a very yeah. safe. So I yeah. enjoy it. Um, what kind of products do you offer in your store? Like what are some brands like you have like Uncle Mike's and stuff like that? Oh, you know what? I am a, uh, a wholesaler for Double Alpha Academy. Um, awesome. When I, when I decided to open up this shop, I really, really studied what USPSA shooters are, uh, are shooting. What do they use? What, what's, the, what's the best stuff out there? Um, and uh, I settled on Double Alpha. I mean, they've they got some really good uh, customer support out there out of Pennsylvania. Um, obviously, everyone's familiar with their brand. And... Um, so that's the majority of the stuff I sell. I would say over 90% is probably Double Alpha Academy stuff okay. geared towards the USPSA shooter, three gunner, or, you know, IDPA or, yeah. <laughs> you know, if they're bored on a weekend. They, yeah, they, actually, they actually want to shoot a real sport. <laughs> right. Whoa. I don't think any IDPA guys um, listen to my podcast. They're too busy sewing patches on their Yes. <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah, I've I've never used double alpha stuff. Like um, this belt will be the very first uh, like double alpha thing I've purchased. <laughs> that belt that I bought that was too small. Um, ah. I put it on. I put it on. It, it barely fit, but I could just tell like it's more like the belt is like just super rigid. I think it's going to be good, so I'm excited. Absolutely. Your holster stays in the exact same spot that is always at. So, you know, that draw strokes consistent, your magazine pouches are going to be there. Um, I've been shooting the same belt shoot. I don't know for a couple of years now, I just switched everything over from single stack to my limited rig, you know, my, my limited, my double, uh, double alpha mag pouches. They're all rocking and rolling still no issues. I never tried the mag pouches, but I've heard good things about them. Um, I know on your website, you know, you do like kind of like a contingency pro- program, like for people that win. Why don't you kind of talk about that? Yes, sir. Uh, just as a way to kind of get our name out there and kind of get us going. Um, I, I was mid season. It was kind of late in the year, but I started a contingency program uh, for, for, you know, the everyday shooter. Um, I mean, how many guys out there do you see like, hey, you know, they wear a whole bunch of stuff on their jersey and they get, you know, a 5% discount code out of it. Um, after shooting the Henry Cup uh, last uh, spring, you know, and, and kind of seeing how they used, I guess, you know, uh, a little bit of money to kind of draw. Man, they, they drew in some huge names, some big names in shooting when it was a $1,000 uh, prize for each division. Um, a lot of top guys were there top talent so i just kind of got the idea off that kicked it around kind of floated it out there and really getting a lot of good uh good feedback so basically if you throw the if you email me at info at red dirt shooting sports.com that's info at red dirt shooting sports.com give me your uspsa number your name telephone number email and uh i'll send you back a a, a file so some you know, my logo that you can put on your jersey and uh, some pretty solid, uh, uh, you know, monetary value that you can get there. I'm pulling it up right now. Yeah, I have it right here. So what you have, 
<laughs> I like your division winner, Pat. Level one. Come on, seriously, that's funny. So level two, <laughs> with a minimum of 25 divis- uh, competitors in your division. So first place, 200. Second place, 100. Third place, 50. And then level three, which would be like area matches, nationals, mm-hmm. Henry Cup. First place, 500. Second place, 400. And third place, 300. That's awesome. Absolutely. And, and uh, man, we've had some guys – you know, they, they, they put a hurting on me. You know, I've had to, I've had to dig deep into those pockets to find some, a couple dollars or oh, a specific old Tom powers out of South Carolina, man. He's been rocking it. He won that's area. A, four. That's a dude that shoots PCC, right? Right, right. He shoots yeah. PCC and he's actually a master class limited uh, pistol shooter as well. Um, he won yeah. area four and then uh placed sixth at national PCC. So he, he's been shooting for red dirt. I met him. About two years ago, and uh, he's been shooting for red dirt since, and he's 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 putting away a couple of dollars. That's good, man. That's good. That's cool. Yeah, I, I like that. I had seen that. I had seen that. I guess when you put it out, I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, we got some things in the works for 2020. Uh, so, uh, specifically, a couple of new uh, pistol parts that I, I'm working with. Uh, you know, a patent attorney and all that good stuff. So. Uh, I'm really hoping to continue the the contingency program for two, 2020. Uh, we're going to revamp it, hopefully make it bigger and better, and uh, hopefully get a little bit more prize money behind everything. Awesome, awesome. Look, Dad, yeah. you can you can join Red Dirt Shooting Sports, Dad. Hey, RDSS, got it. That's it. Awesome. Um, I guess this. Look, let me, let me pull up my questions and make sure we've covered everything. So let's talk about reloading. So obviously, you know, to shoot this sport we all love, reloading helps. What kind of uh, kind of loads are you running? What what are you using to reload? And let me do my disclaimer. Um, any reloading advice taken or heard on this podcast is solely what we do. We don't recommend what we don't recommend. You do what we do, especially when Charles talks about his loads. Um, <laughs> A lot of animosity on here tonight. Um, anyway, yeah, just, you know, don't take it as to heart. You know, always do your research and do your part. So go ahead, Sean. All righty. Well, I, I, y'all are going to hate me for this, but I've been spoiled. So I've been with the Border Patrol for a little over 12 years now, and I have amassed quite a few 40 cal rounds. They give us training ammo, and I was actually on the Tucson Sector Pistol Team when I was out there in Arizona, so they gave us quite a bit of practice ammo. So switch, so since switching to a 40 cal about a year ago or last December, I have not reloaded one round. Holy crap. <laughs> I am very blessed. Uh, I had quite a few round, you know, I had quite a few ammo stashed away and uh, I've been shooting uh, ammo that they give us. That's awesome. Now, on the flip side, the stuff I shoot's pretty hot. It's about, oh, it's 180. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, it's on. It's, it's, it's running. It's screaming down range. It's 180 grain, uh, head down range at about 10, 20 feet per second. Wow. So you get about a 180, anywhere from a 180. I've been chronoed anywhere from a 180 to 185 power factor. Wow. So you don't even have to like, you're not worried about making not making power factor then yeah no they look at me and they just say what is wrong with you (laughs) it's free and and i say hey i'll shoot free ammo i just gotta grip a little harder that's it yeah i put a little more pro grip on (laughs) that's crazy that's cool though that is quite that is a good situation to be in absolutely very very blessed to be able to have that those resources uh thank you uh u.s taxpayers appreciate it and uh you're welcome (laughs) Um, but that's, so that being said, my, my stash is slowly dwindling. So, uh, I will be reloading starting in January. Um, looking at CFE powder. I've heard really good things about it. Haven't used it. That's what dad uh, uses. He, he, is that what y'all use? Dad uses it, right? Dad, CFE pistol. Yes, sir. I like it. Yeah, it's pretty good. Oh, good. Good to hear. Buddy, Tiger. buddy, shoots nine major shoots it, really likes it. Yeah, tight grip is it's it's cheap. That's you know it's what it's made for. But man, it makes your gun freaking dirty. That's what I've heard. Yeah, that's definitely it what makes, I've heard. It makes it dirty. And with the Glock, I mean that's okay. Maybe not so much with the 2011s, but yeah, it's like 
on set on Sunday, man, my gun was nasty. It was disgusting <laughs> yeah. from shooting all that ammo. That's cool. What are you gonna reload on? What kind of press are you looking at? I've got a Dylan six fifty. Um Got the bells and whistles, the case feeder, and uh, just picked up a uh, bullet feeder. Awesome! So, so you're um, going to do it right. Yes, sir. I'm 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 one one step away from getting a getting a automated system, but not yet. Not yet. Got got to wait for the tax return for that one. Yeah, that one. Yeah, that thing's cool, man. You just push the button and it is chick 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 chick. Oh, absolutely. Chick 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 chick. Okay. Yeah, 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 whatever, man. man. Whatever, man. You're just mad. Yeah, I am. <laughs> Is that what y'all have, or do y'all have something like that? I have a Dylan. I have a Dylan Square Deal because in my garage I don't have a whole lot of space, and um, I didn't really know how the whole reloading thing was gonna go, so I, I went with that. If I were to upgrade, though, I think I'd probably buy the 650 because then I can put, you know. The case feeder. I think I would just put a case feeder and eventually a bullet yeah. feeder on it, but I don't have the space for it. Um, in my garage, I don't have a whole lot of room. Dad, why don't you talk about what you reload on? Well, you'd have more room if you make your wife park out in the driveway. Yeah, Ooh, good luck. those are fighting good words. Good luck with that. <laughs> good luck with that. <laughs> I am using a single stage RCBS loader, but I've, I'm working with Santa Claus on the Dillon 650. You gotta go six fifty. Well, dude. Oh shit! I can't have my little hairy-legged son have something better than me. Yeah, <laughs> that's. There you go. Hey, yeah, you'll like it. Um. So. Are you all yeah. seeing a sh- a shortage of the six fifties out there now that the seven fifty came out? Uh, I, there was a guy on Instagram that was selling one for like real cheap. Yeah, I don't think I think you're gonna have. I think they'll be out there. <laughs> Um, yep. I think it's just going to be hard to find, but I think where you get those guys that are moving up to the seven fifties and, and, yeah. and trying to unload their six fifties. Yeah. So they can buy the seven fifty. I think the six, like just from what people have said about it, I think the six fifty will be better than the seven fifty. but, um, have you looked into it? What, what, what are the big differences? I mean, I really haven't even I messed think, with it. I think I, I've like this from what guys on podcasts have talked about and, and what you know, what Dylan put, I think it's really not that big of a difference. Um, I don't know. I think I don't think you can go wrong with the six fifty. You know, they've had the six fifty for freaking years. So exactly, new it's technology proven. always kind of scares me. Mm-hmm. So, like like this whole Skype thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. This is disclaimer. This is the first time I've used Skype, so yeah. I'm, I'm doing okay, I think. Yeah, I had some technical difficulties. <laughs> and all due respect, you, you you can't read lips worth the crap. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I don't know. Maybe I can. I just can't, you know, repeat what I heard or what I saw. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> So um, before we jump out of here, I we actually got some reviews on our uh, Apple podcast. So I kind of wanted to read some of these. Um, they're a little old. I guess I hadn't checked them. So let's look. <laughs> the oldest one is from July 26th. Really? Title is Great Show. Just started listening to it. Um, it's a great show with much info. This show is enjoyable and easy to listen to. Keep up the great work like USPSA. Thank, um, the guy's name is Hammer. So thank you, Hammer. Appreciate it. Hopefully Santa Claus brings you a dictionary. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> he gave you a good deal. And you tear him up, man. He only gave me three, four stars, man. <laughs> well, he's going to take one away You can now. give me five stars and uh, you can say whatever you want about me. I don't care. Just give me the five stars. All right. This one says beginner show. I guess this show is decent if you're a beginner in USPSA or competitive shooting. It is not really that entertaining either. Just a guy with his father and his brother just talking. Very little useful useful information. Not trying to be a jerk, just being honest. This was from DFK USPSA. Dear uh, DFK, what the hell do you think a podcast is? It's people talking. Yeah, and my little brother was only on one episode, so you are fake news, so that's fine. Whatever. <laughs> now, this one is a good one. This is a five-star review. From okay, M-A-E-K-R. no slam. E-K-R. What a great podcast. I really enjoy listening to the guys talk about a wide variety of topics. I have learned a lot from listening and laughed my butt 
Laugh my butt too. This guy needs a dictionary as well. <laughs> Keep on the great show, guys. There we go. Hey, Look it on phonics. Work for John, me. You can get some um, dictionaries on Red Dirt Shooting Sports. <laughs> 10% off for 10% all podcast for, listeners. For all my <laughs> listeners. Woo. God dang. All right, last one. This one is from Herman. <laughs> From July 31st, I just started listening to this podcast, and it's pretty good. As a new USPSA shooter, it's cool to hear stories of other relatively new shooters and get their perspective on the USPSA sport. There you go. Thank you. So thank you guys for posting those. Go ahead and make sure you leave us more reviews so that way we can, um, you know, talk about them. Uh, you can leave us five stars, and you can say whatever we want. We'll read it on air as long as it's not <laughs> super offensive. Leave so. us one, and we'll dog you. Yeah. There you go. That's a one star. So awesome. But yeah. Um, is there anything else I want to talk about before we jump out of here? Sean, you want to plug your social media so people can find you? Absolutely, guys. On, on Facebook, check out reddirtshootingsports.com. Oh, I'm sorry, just Red Dirt Shooting Sports. Uh, I got a lot of just personal stuff up there and for you know practice videos and, and match videos, things like that that's going on in my business. And then also on Instagram at Red Dirt Shooting Sports as well. Awesome. Yeah, I will link your stuff on in the show notes so y'all can check him out. Oh, uh, make do. sure you check out his website. Go buy some stuff from him. You do a like belt ship for free, things like that. So you know, if you need a belt, hit them up. Yes, sir. All belts, no matter what, they they ship for free. Anything over hundred dollars, also free shipping anywhere in the U.S. Awesome. Cool. So I guess we can we can end this thing. So thank you guys for listening to our podcast. We're sorry if we hurt your feelings in any way. Um, but can, are we really? You can write me an email and I'll, I'll apologize. Yeah. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't really care. Um, but thanks, guys, for listening. Make sure you go to our Facebook page, the Search Shoot, Reload, Repeat podcast. Go and like our page. Um I, th- I would like to do another listener question episode because I feel like we haven't done that in a while. Uh, make sure you subscribe to us on Instagram or subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts. Subscribe to us wherever you listen to your podcast. Go on. Make sure we, if you do listen on Apple Podcasts, leave us a five star review. You can follow me on Instagram at Practical as Buck. Their co host, you want to plug your Instagram? C31 Leatherwood. And I will post the questionable. DQ video probably tomorrow so that way people can see it. You make the call. Yeah, you make yes. the call. No, no, no. No, no, Yeah. And so, the challenge flag. We need the challenge flag. Yeah. You, yes, sir. In the works. For trade it. Maybe Red Dirt can make a pouch for your gun belt to put the challenge flag in. <laughs> oh, hey, Sean, do you make a pouch that you can put your pro grip in? We do. We do have one. Uh, it's 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 up on the website. Check it out, guys. Um, I need one. There's actually two things. It's a it's a pouch, and the other one is it's a it's a magnet. So it's pretty cool. Awesome. Better than keeping it in your pocket or you know back in your bag or something. So great for practice when you don't have to run up range. This this and that. Just use your pro grip real quick. Put it back, and you're good to go. Awesome. All right. So that is all we have, guys. Thank you, guys, for listening. Thank you, Sean, for spending time with us i know we can kind of be pains in the butt but i hope you enjoyed your time on here with us thank you for your service yes yes sir absolutely gentlemen it was a pleasure being on here and looking forward to next time and if i ever need 40 ammo i know who to come to or 40 brass <laughs> you can pull it out of my cold dead hands <laughs> <laughs> Woo! a lot of animosity i think i'm the title i think i'm on the title of the show animosity with sean Hyde. <laughs> Or sigh. <laughs> there he is. That's it right there. That's the there it is. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for listening. Um, I We do appreciate it. And make sure you follow us on social medias, like our Instagram, and shoot fast and don't suck. <laughs>